Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a uh, Mexico research update from a world-renowned shark expert who spends about 10 months a year in the field with the research team. Now he's been featured on BBC, Nat Geo, and is a regular on Shark Week for Discovery Channel. Help me welcome the fins attached field scientist, Dr. Mauricio Hoyas. Thank you very much. I am very excited to be here, and Alex uh, asked me to talk about all the things that we have done uh, related with the research in Revilla Hill in Mexico. Okay, so we are gonna, I'm going to talk about all the things that we have done related with research about telemetry, and we did an expedition at Submersible, so I will show you very amazing footage. Uh, really, here's very important article for uh, about feeding and reproduction of the sharks. I'm going to show you some footage of reproduction. These are uh, white tip reefs. And look at this, this is amazing. It's very hard to, to see something like this. Most of them are males, and there is just one female. Look at that. Love hurts in the, <laughs> in the world of sharks. Look at that. This is amazing. This is in San Benedito at about 138 feet. So we get to see this in the in the very often. And also these places are very important stepping stone for highly migratory species such as the scarlet tamarins. Unfortunately, we have had some records of illegal fishing. This happened in 2008 in the boiler. Somebody thought that it was a good idea to set a net to this pinnacle, and they caught sharks from different species, turtles, and even dolphins. It was really, really bad, but now the Mexican government is working very hard to avoid this kind of things. Fortunately, we have a lot of species of sharks in Venezuela, like the like Galapagos, the Tosky, white nose, here with the hammer kids, tiger sharks, and whale sharks. Look at the whale shark that I tagged last December. We were looking for this for years. It's a pregnant female. So look at the size of that. You know, she was like 13 meters. I came very close, and I said, uh, spot tag. So now we know where that female is when she's at the surface. She was in Rey de and four days after, she was in the mainland in Manzanillo, and now it's getting south. So probably we will know where are they, they going to give, their, to give birth. Look at that baby. Can you see that? She has 300 babies. They can have up to 300 babies. So it's amazing. And we have been trying to do this for years. So when I saw that female, I didn't say to anyone. I saw it and I tagged it. And then, oh, look, I will check out. <laughs> so our main goal is to identify uh, the movement patterns of the sharks when they are in this archipelago, and also when they are away from the Hello archipelago. And in order to do this, we are doing, uh, we are using a lot of different types of technology. Uh, first, uh, acoustic telemetry. This is a, a transmitter that you're sending a shark, and it sends an acoustic pulse uh, with an ID. And in order to tag the shark, you can do it internally. So you have to fish for the shark with a special hook. Bring it to the surface, do an incision, and we have to insert the transmitter. And this transmitter is going to be inside of the shark for up to, well, for the whole life, but the body is good for 10 years. So we are learning a lot of things about these animals thanks to this technology. In the case of the scale of hammerheads, we have to tag them externally because it's very hard to fish them. We don't know why, but we have been trying and trying, and we cannot fish the scale of hammerheads. So now we are tagging them externally. Uh, when these sharks are close to the underwater receivers, that we have in this archipelago, we get all the information and we switch these devices every year. We have underwater receivers all over the archipelago. This is a Benedicto, it's very good for giant mantas and also for scarlet hammerheads. So all are very nice for the compact whales. Roma Partida for me is the best place in the whole archipelago. And Clarion, this is a way so no one, no one goes there, but it's also a very, very nice place to go. This is another kind of technology, the sunlight transmitters. You have to get the shark to the surface and we have to drill the dorsal fin and send this device. But it's very important because every time that the shark is at the surface, it sends a signal so we know the migration patterns of these animals. And also, in 2013 and in 2015, we used a submersible, so I'm going to show you footage of the things that we saw. Look at this picture. This is Roca Partida. We went to 400 meters and we saw amazing things. Socorro, let's start with Socorro. We have tagged a lot of different species like Galapagos, silver tips, silkies, tiger sharks. Look at the size of this shark. One day I was with, with Andy, he belongs to the British military, and when he saw that shark, he didn't want to come with me. Look at this. Look at the size of that female. She was like five meters. 
amazing. We tagged them. We have tagged up to seven tiger sharks in, in the Yeager archipelago. And we have found very interesting things about their behavior. They are in this island since we tagged them in 2010. And we, went, we, we, got, we got records in general. So for seven years, we have been getting records of these animals. What about the silver tips? If you type a silver tip in Socorro, they remain there for their whole life. It's really, really interesting. In the case of the silky sharks, they live in open water. You get one record, then another record, then another record. It's very interesting how they use the same island, all these different species. We went to the bottom of uh, Socorro Island, and we found something that is called a mesophoric reef. For us, it's like, a, like an oasis of life. Look at this. We were there 80 meters. And you get to see a lot of uh, soft coral. In all the life, it's there. I don't know why, but if you are deeper than 100 meters, there's nothing. But at 80 meters, you get to see all these animals. Look at this. We have identified up to 389 species of fish. And I think that all of them were there. Look at this. To the surface. Sharks. Galapagos. Silver It was amazing. The first thing that we get to see something like this. Rota Partida. We have like, different species also. Galapagos, they remain there also the whole time. Silver tips, the same. They have very high side fidelity. But in the case of the silkies, tip, one record, tip, another record, tip, another record, because they live in open water. Submersible in Roca Partida. We went to 400 meters. We went from 400 meters to the surface and gave what we saw. We found a graveyard of humpback whales. Right, right. Really, really deep. And then at the surface, the same, the mesophonic reefs. Look at this footage. And we saw like two, three, four dead whales right at the bottom at 400 meters. We couldn't believe it. Look at that. And we get to see these animals very often in March. So if you want to go to Remedicado, if you want to see the humpback whales, you have to go in February or March. We are going in February and March also. Yeah. We went to the surface and we found the same, the mesophonic reef, and it was full of sharks. And this is the first time that I, get, that I got to see the scallop hammer gates from underneath. That was like 80 meters to the surface. Isla San Benedicto. We tagged silver tips, and this is very important. When the silver tips and the Galapagos are in Socorro and in Roca Partida, they remain there when they are big. And when they are pregnant, they move to San Benedicto to give birth to their babies. So they are using other islands as nursery areas. And this is very, very important. Look at this. The babies remain there for a long period until they are big enough, like a meter and a half, and then they move to Roca Partida, and they are there with the males, the females, they mate, they start the gestation period, and when they are about to give birth, they go to San Benedicto or Socorro to have their pops. In the case of the scarlet hammerhead, we have that pregnant females, like really, really big, like three meters pregnant females. They remain in San Benedicto for a long time until July, then they disappear. And it's in June when we get to see, in, in July when we get to see the babies and the pregnant females in the Sea of Cortez. So are these females going to the Sea of Cortez to deliver their pup? We do not know now, but that's why we are getting biological samples from these animals. Look at that. We tagged a lot of uh, sharks with solid transmitters, tigers, silkies, and Galapagos. Look at the size of that female. Her name is Cassandra. She was like four meters. And look at the behavior. When they are at the surface, they are in front of two specific places. And then in these places are turtle nursing grounds. We took this footage in uh, December. Look at this. That's a green turtle. But look at the behavior of the turtle. It's amazing. She knows that she has this hard part. So she's showing the hard part to the shark most of the time. Look at the tiger. She would, he, the, the tiger would try to get a piece of it, but she's like, uh-uh, you're -uh, not getting anything from here. Look at this. OK, the tiger is coming. Woo! Okay. And again, the tiger is running away. He's trying to get her from underneath. And look at the behavior of the turtle. OK, he's like, OK, OK, she's not going to see me now. I'm coming from behind. Look, 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 whoa, right there. It's amazing. It's amazing to get to see this, this behavior. And talking about mantas, we have seen also mantas in the zip protest that were recorded in the Lady Higiel Archipelago. And also with solid transmitters, we know that they remain from 100 to 120 meters during the day and during the night, but we didn't know why. In the submersible, we were in Socorro Island, and look what we saw. These are about 130 meters. 
This is the first record of a giant manta feeding in deep water. We just published that paper last year. Can you see that? She's doing circles and she's trying to get as much salt plankton as possible. So no one knew about this before. Silky sharks, they are highly migratory. We tag three with satellite transmitters and look how far they can go. Can you see this? So we have found so far that a tiger shark from San Benedicto was recorded in the Sea of Cortez in Cabo Pulmo, which is another marine protected area. And also we have the record of a white nose shark from Cabo Pulmo to Revista. We know that the sharks move from Tortos Galapagos to Manpelo, but now we have a record of a silky shark that moved from Galapagos to Clipperton. And last year, in Revista, we got the record of a Galapagos that was moving from Revista to Clipperton. So the sharks do not respect human boundaries, and that's why it's very important to protect them in all these places. Also for us, it's very important, uh, the kids are very important. And that's why we started a comic about this marine biologist. His name is Mauricio, I don't know why, maybe Alex. I don't know why, but, but the story says that uh, he was in Guadalupe Island with his captain. And then they saw this illegal fisherman trying to kill a white shark. So he was there trying to save the, the white shark, but he was hit in the head. So he went, he went to the bottom of the ocean. And this shark took him with the shark goddess, Deep Blue. And look at the story. He was there like, oh my god, what happened? And Deep Blue is like, do you want to help sharks? Yes, I do. I'm going to give you special powers. So now he becomes this superhero that is called Amalcua to protect the sharks in Mexican water. Look at that. It's so cute. <laughs> and, uh, and we go back to the third topic. It's about the Viejijero. And we talk about Roca Partida, Socorro Island, uh -huh. the, the illegal fishermen trying to get the babies of the silver tips. And the, the divers trying to help us. This is Shane from A1. This is Ali from Denver Divers helping the local authority. Look who's here. Alex is here helping us. She was the, she was the director of the, of the Red Hill Park uh, last year, Josue Navarro. The Mexican Navy tried to work together in order to protect this majestic animal, animal because this is the, the way that we have to do it. Thank you very much.